I'm Johnny Rowland, your host of The Shooting Show, and we certainly want to welcome all of you here with us today. We have another great show for you. We're going to cover some very interesting guns, and also, if we have time, we're going to go back and, and look at some of the past things we've covered. You know, friends, this is our seventh year on the air nationally, and honestly, in doing these hundreds of programs, we really have some things that, that are very entertaining. We've certainly done in the past. We get a, quite a number of requests to go back and pick up particular features that we did. And, of course, we've got a whole lineup of things we're going to be doing in the future. We want to thank everyone for their contributions because, literally, you're helping us stay on the air. We have some light in the tunnel, friends. And I tell you what, it is so important that we keep this message going out on television because all around us, as we can see in government, in the news media, at every attempt or every opportunity, they make an attempt to belittle us as gun owners, make us look like crazies, try to uh, uh, describe just what dangerous instruments these guns are. Friends, I tell you what, it is a conspiracy to remove all firearms from American society. We'll be talking more about that later on the program. I saw something on the news a few days ago that really made me so angry involving domestic violence, and we'll be talking about that uh, I believe later on in the program today. You know, none of us believes in domestic violence, but this recent amendment this, to this uh, tag on postal spending uh, amendment, that's what it amounted to, that uh, makes a misdemeanor for domestic violence uh, in the past, retroactive. If you've ever had a little scuffle at your home, you were convicted of a misdemeanor. This might involve spanking your children. Maybe you have a neighbor that doesn't approve of spanking and files charges against you. And maybe some judge just says, well, uh, here's a $25 fine, whatever else. You've been charged with a misdemeanor for domestic violence. Guess what? You will be relieved of all your guns and all your ammunition, and as long as you live, you can never own another gun. Now, friends, let's get real. Let's get real. No one is for domestic violence. No one. Absolutely not. But sometimes things happen that aren't just, are just, are not serious. And it's just another chink in the armor of us as gun owners because these people are going to backdoor. They know they can't come to our homes and get our guns. They know that. So they've got to chip away a little here, a little bit there, a little bit all around. And suddenly, you know, if you, if you cut away, you can take a great oak tree and you chip away long enough at different parts on that trunk, it's going to fall. And that's exactly what these people have in mind doing. Just look what we've lost in the last four years as far as gun rights. Look back in 25 years, we've lost more as far as gun rights go in the last 25 or so years. Uh, we've lost more than we lost the entire existence of our country up to this point. So anyway, friends, well, let's begin today's program. The good folks at Clark Custom Guns have loaned us a, uh, a Kasool revolver, this great, uh, very precise single-action revolver from Freedom Arms out in Freedom, Wyoming. And let me tell you what, friends, on the Kasools, yep, they're as good as, <laughs> they're as, good as what everybody says. That's right. Uh, this is a phenomenally uh, performing revolver. Uh, so let's begin today's program with this Kasool. This one is in a 44 Magnum chamber. And let me tell you, there's a reason that these things are such winning handguns and silhouette shooting, uh, such winning handguns and buckmasters. Yeah, there's a reason for it. <laughs> Trust me, they are that good. Anyway. Well, let's, uh, let's begin another shooting show. My friends, the gun we're going to look at today first is this great Kasool in 44 Magnum. And a lot of you may be familiar with the 454 Kasool, of course, which was, to my understanding, the first super-powered 45 caliber uh, gun that was really made. And I do mean super-powered because the 454 Kasool is probably uh, the most powerful revolver cartridge uh, that I'm aware of, probably. Uh, uh, there may be some more powerful cartridges that will be comparable, and we're waiting to get our Wildy 475 in, which is going to approximate probably the 454 Kasool. Uh, but that's something we'll compare later on. And of course, we had our Boeing gun a while back in 50 Action Express, but we're talking about rimmed revolver cartridges. And to my knowledge, now there may have been something else, but to my knowledge, the 454 Kasool was the original most powerful revolver cartridges, certainly over the last few years. Well, what we have here, well, someone might say, well, why do you want a 44 Magnum in a Kasool gun when you can get the 454 at no extra charge? 
for that matter, all the Casuals, to my knowledge, such as the 357 Casul, I believe it's 353, and then the 22 caliber, 252 or whatever, uh, they're all around the same price bracket there. And friends, let me tell you what, these have long been uh, classed as the Rolls Royce of revolvers, and honestly, they've got a point. Uh, this is really the first one I've had uh, an opportunity to shoot very much. Uh, I shot a 454 some a oh, couple of years ago with J.D. Jones and was very impressed with it. But we've had this one out here shooting a few rounds through it here on the range, and trust me on this one, it has performed admirably. I would imagine what we're seeing over here on paper with this particular gun, I think with the best ammunition you could find for it, uh, maybe tune ammunition for it, Certainly I would try the great Georgia Arms ammunition because it has, has proven to be just superbly accurate in everything we've shot it in. This gun will probably, and I, I'm out on a limb here just a little bit because I don't know for sure because we don't have a scope for it, but I think there's a very good possibility it will shoot five shot groups at 100 yards, probably an inch and a half. Now wait a minute, friends. <laughs> that is fantastic for any handgun, especially a revolver, and we've just stated why someone might want a 44 Magnum. These guns are huge winners in silhouette shooting where you're shooting at the extended ranges. They have a very, very strong record for winning the Buckmaster series. Uh, I believe this is what uh, Blackie Sleva shoots is a, a Casul and 44 Magnum simply because they are so well made, uh, so precise, and so well thought out. Now this is more a specialist gun. Uh, and those of you looking at it, you may say, well, this looks like a Ruger Super Blackhawk, but trust me, it is not the same gun as a Super Blackhawk. Now, a Super Blackhawk is a, a fine handgun, but it's not the same thing as a Kasu. One, uh, the manufacturing tolerances are just uh, ridiculously small on this Kasu, and we know. Now, it works sort of like a Colt single action. It does not have a transfer bar ignition, and they recommend you carry the gun with uh, four loaded. It's a five shooter, not a six shooter, a five shooter. Uh, and the manual actually recommends you carry it with four in the cylinder and hammer down over an empty chamber. Uh, some of us, after looking at the gun, it does have a hammer safety uh, that appears to be very solid. Now, they may be trying to avoid litigation. I'm not sure. A lot of people will probably, and I believe I'd, I'd even call the factory for sure. I have I personally, I haven't talked to them, but this gun could probably be carried uh, in a holster with five rounds because that that hammer block safety does look pretty strong. It does look strong. Now then, to completely uh, do away with any possible litigation, maybe that's why they say carried hammer down on an empty uh, hole there in the cylinder, and I won't argue that. But uh, seriously, these are some of the the finest guns that have ever been made by any manufacturer. Now, a while back, we were showing our, our Ruger single action here, and we know these guns are unloaded. And the Ruger is a very practical, sort of a pedestrian type uh, single action. The uh, triggers are not real good. They're about four and a half, five pounds. It's about, about standards. Some creep, uh, but they're, they're pretty durable, and they're, they're pretty accurate guns for what they are but they're just not machined. One, they don't cost nearly as much what the Kasul costs, and that cost is in handwork, is in a very, very aerospace type machine work. Instead of having a cylinder that's uh, pretty much all the same that will, will interchange between guns, each cylinder is line bored with the barrel. So essentially what you have, you have a remarkable amount of repeatability. When each hole comes up, there's no question where it's going to be. It's going to be aligned uh, in perfection with the barrel. And that's where uh, some of this great accuracy comes from. There is no play when it locks up. There is no play whatsoever. We'll show you that in just a second. What I think Dick Kasul did, and he is no longer associated with Freedom Arms, incidentally. He's coming out uh, with his own gun line here soon, but but don't worry, the Freedom Arms people have kept up the quality uh, through all these years. Quality has really been off the chart. But what they did, I think that Dick Kasul took a look at the Ruger single action, took its strong points and said, hey, this is a good idea, uh, just needs a few things here and there. 
And, of course, he wanted a super-powered revolver. And, doggone it, he went and built himself one. Believe me, he really did. Because these guns do have an unusual amount of strength. Uh, and they have several things that really, you take a Super Black Hawk and you fix it with to really make it more rugged, more durable, more accurate. And this is sort of what you're going to get. Now, in the, uh, in the grip here, the main spring is not a coil spring like on the Ruger. I found that interesting. It is a leaf spring, sort of like on a Smith & Wesson revolver. And I think the reasoning behind that was you get a, a very crisp, clean, again, no transfer bar, a very crisp and clean trigger pull. A lot of the accuracy on any firearm, whether it be handgun, rifle, whatever, depends on how well you can control the trigger. When the trigger is clean breaking and crisp without a lot of take up, a lot of creep, and is a moderate amount of consistent pressure, it's flatly easier to hit your target with. And that's one thing that these guns have. As I mentioned earlier, this gun is, is on sale over at Clark Custom Guns. I'll give you their number. If you'd like to have this particular 44 Magnum Casul, you can call Clark Custom Guns and talk to them about ordering it. It is discounted somewhat from the original list price. I think someone had bought the gun, and uh, of course they, they're not inexpensive. They had bought the gun and for some reason ran into, into financial trouble or something. Anyway, had to bring the gun in. So it is at a somewhat discounted price, and these guns are very hard to find used anywhere because they're in such demand. As I understand it, the factory has never completely caught up with the man in production. It is not a high volume item, but as I understand it, the factory has never caught up with production. One of the things that, of course, I was sort of griping about, and I really wish Ruger would address this, and the harder kicking, the heavier load ammunition in the Ruger single actions, the base pin here is going to slip. It's going to jump out of place. And if yours hadn't done it yet, only 44 or 45, uh, if you plan to shoot some really heavy loads uh, and some commercial loads out there, uh, you need to get one of the Hamilton Bowen cylinder pins or get one from Brownells that has a screw in it that will lock this pin in place. And of course what this is about is to enable you to take the gun down for, for easy cleaning. But heck, friends, we're not going to clean them out on the range typically anyway. Uh, to get this casool down, you do have a screw here, and we'll take a closer look in just a second at that. So that is a huge fix for these guns. Also, uh, in fact, let's do it now. Let's just take a closer look. We'll show it to you. See what you think. Shoot and Show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station.
friends, here it is, some of this great Georgia Arms ammunition. Whether you need ammunition for your AR-15 or your hunting rifle or maybe your revolver or semi-automatic handgun, I tell you what, the good folks at Georgia Arms build the best ammunition for the best price I've ever heard of. You know, you have a free call, you get a free catalog, and I tell you what, friends, this is second to none as far as ammunition that you can buy. It comes in these plastic bags so you can actually see what you're getting. And plus, these are some of the nicest people we've ever had the opportunity of meeting in or around the firearms industry. Friends, what you need to do, you need to call them and get a catalog and then make your order on whatever you need for superior ammunition at an absolutely superior price. Georgia Arms, give them a call down there and tell them, please tell them you saw it on the shooting show and please thank them for their support of our project because they're helping us stay on the air and give you folks information. Georgia Arms in Villarica, Georgia. Now friends, something I want to show you right away. See how the uh, cylinder here on the Kasul has a recessed cylinder to completely surround and close the case head on our Ruger and most other revolvers. You see, you don't have that. You have the uh, case head here uh, exposed. And there are a couple of reasons for that. One, I suppose it, uh, of course, it's not really a problem on today's modern cartridges, but what it does is it keeps the, uh, the loading gate here from going anywhere because the end of the cylinder literally is flush with the loading gate. Now on the Ruger, under heavy load, this can actually jump out of position if there's not a cartridge case underneath the loading gate here. It'll spring forward what it'll do and tie up the gun. But in this case, notice it is completely flush across here. That loading gate cannot go anywhere, absolutely. It does work somewhat like the old 45 Colt that uh, single action armor we're familiar with. You load the gun by putting it on half cock and then the cylinder is free to turn. Then it can be unloaded and, and loaded, of course, on half cock. Now then, uh, the gun, of course, has a fabulous trigger. It is very crisp, just very crisp. And notice, in lockup, there is no movement, just none. I mean, none at all. Now then, let's compare to our Super Blackhawk and see, see you got a little movement there? And look at the bolt cut on the Kasul versus the bolt cut there on the Ruger. You can tell it is a much larger uh, bolt cut here on the Kasul. You have very fine adjustable sights. And this is a premier grade here. They offer it in field and premier grade. Now then, here's something I want to show you. See this screw right here? This is going to keep this cylinder pin, because that's what will happen on the, on the Rugers. Heck, that cylinder pin under fierce recoil, it's got a little spring here, it'll come out. But you see this has a locking screw here. Another neat touch. See how this turns right here? It's going to resist coming straight back like it would under recoil up and back. It's going to resist uh, having the, let's put it on half cock now then, uh, having this ejection rod here come back and tap the nose of that bullet as I have seen on some of the Rugers. I wish, like I said, I wish Ruger would, would just fix, fix the silly things they have wrong with their guns. Okay, anyway, moving right along. But on the Kasul, very thoughtfully, they have a little angle. It's got to come down this way, and I'll turn it where it'll, where it'll move. Here we go. It's actually got to shift down somewhat and over. Good idea. See, when it comes just straight back, it can't, it's not nearly as likely to tap the nose of that bullet in the, uh, in the cylinder there. Very thoughtful. Absolutely. Very well thought out. A really quality piece of work. Also, we've seen velocities. Of course, the uh, barrel cylinder gap here is very, very small, and maybe that has something to do with it, but we've seen velocities higher in the uh, Kasul single actions out of the same barrel length as compared to some of the other guns, of course, the Super Blackhawk here. Maybe it is precision machine work. Uh, maybe it's a small barrel cylinder gap, but it sure does work. My friends, we got it on half cop. got our loading gate open. Now then, tell you what we're going to do. We're going to load two shells. Go ahead and put one in. Then we'll skip a chamber and load another one. All right, if you wanted to put uh, four in the gun, you could continue loading and watch. 
when you come around to your next bullet, when you see the first one loaded again, you'll know there's an empty chamber underneath uh, the hammer there. So that is a one way of deciding when to, uh, to stop loading, of course, is when you see the first one come up. All right, friends, let's go ahead and take a shot with our Kasul 44 Magnum, let you see it in action. Yes, a real work of art. Let me tell you what. Now, friends, another thing that I like about the Kasul gun, you know, the Ruger Super Blackhawk, and again, I'm not bad mouthed with Rugers because this is one, certainly one of my favorite guns, but I wish that Ruger would take the time and pay attention and fix some of these little uh, uh, things that it would be so easy for them to do. Just like uh, my main gripe with the Ruger is the cylinder pin here. And doggone, they could fix that. It cost them about a dollar a gun, if that much, to fix that. And so if anybody with Ruger is watching, please pay attention because <laughs> it's really silly uh, that you folks let this go. Anyway, all right, move right along. Uh, one of the gripes I have about the, the squared off trigger guard on the Ruger, it tends to nail my finger. And me and just about everybody else I know that shoots one of these guns, because I do like the old gun, and of course one of the great things about any single action like this Ruger, it's going to roll up in your hand when it's fired. See, it rolls up in your hand. Well, the Kasu comes, of course, roll it around there, there we go, now looking very carefully, not to look down that barrel, but looking in the cylinder with the barrel pointed away, of course, I was looking for that bullet to come up, okay, the one we just loaded. Now. The Kasul has a slightly slimmer grip, but it has this rounded trigger guard here, which I think is a real asset, certainly. Uh, for the super high powered, it's a little different from a Bisley, but uh, I personally uh, really do like the grip on this gun. It has a very pretty, it looks like a black wood. It may be some sort of laminate there, but it, it is, uh, in fact, I thought it might have been McCarter when I first saw the gun, but no, it's wood. It's just a real pretty wood. Same drill here. it's just really not bad. These single actions definitely have an advantage when shooting the higher powered cartridges because the recoil literally, let's get where you can see me here, rolls up in your hand. It rolls up so it just doesn't hurt your wrist and uh, your web here of your hand nearly as much as some other guns. A very, very nicely thought out, uh, I think that the uh, proper term there would be the Rolls-Royce of single action revolvers. I really, <laughs> I really believe it because these are such precisely made guns. They really are as good as what their reputation says they are. And if you can afford a really premium class handgun, whether to use for target shooting or hunting, silhouette shooting, or maybe you want to compete in Buckmasters, or maybe you want to take the gun deer hunting, something like that, well trust me on this one, they really will do it. And the 44 Magnum is a good addition for a lot of us because a lot of us have 44 Magnum loading dies, you have 44 Magnum bullets, you have such a wide variety of components available. Plus, you get a little uh, better than what you're used to performance as far as velocities goes from a, a powder charge from a particular bullet, but you also get that superior accuracy. So, we definitely give the Kasul revolver very high marks. And uh, as I said earlier, if you'd like to have this particular gun, it is. Uh, right now, anyway, it's on sale at Clark Custom Guns, 318-949-9884, and ask them about this particular one. This is the only uh, 44 Magnum Kasul that they have in stock that I'm certainly aware of, and they'd certainly tell you this is one featured on our program. Heck of a nice gun, a really, really nice package from uh, the good folks out there in Freedom, Wyoming. Yes. 
friends, here it is. This is the great Browning model of 1919. This is a converted machine gun. Now it's a semi-automatic rifle that has a rather large magazine capacity, actually. Talk about one of the most fun guns that I have ever come across. Brought to you by the good people at NWI. You can literally own a piece of United States history. The Model 1919 was the workhorse of the U.S. and Allied armies that were used in aircraft tanks and frontline infantry and saw action from World War II up through Vietnam. They're very simple to operate, very, very rugged, and friends, it may be the ultimate plinker and fun gun. The good folks at NWI have a number of these guns that have been converted, perfectly legal to own all over the United States without any fancy licensing. Give them a call. NWI, their number is area 503-429-5001. Again, area 503-429-5001. 5001. I tell you what, these are such nice people, and please thank them for helping us to keep the shooting show on the air. Yeah. All right. Take, take a couple more shots. Friends, observe the lack of... Go ahead. All right, sir. Thank you. Put your safety on now. There you go. Good. The shooting show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station. Friends, I'm wearing my little diet patch here, and I tell you what, it's helping me because it's cutting back my appetite. All you have to do, if you're interested in the diet patch, if you're familiar with a smoker's patch, well, this is the same principle. It is all natural ingredients. It is nothing that is of a prescription nature, but I tell you, it does, it certainly does help. We get a little commission on each one of these diet patch packages that are sold, so certainly it helps us stay on the air. If you're interested in losing weight, as I am, and, uh, you know, we're always looking for nutritional things. We're always looking for ways to lose weight. I certainly am. And uh, this is a great idea. So if you're interested in the diet patch, you can call them 1-800-408-8618. Again, 1-800-408-8618, extension 8390. And please tell them that you saw it here on our program. If you're interested in finding us on the Internet, you can do so. And our Internet address is www.advantage.com outlet.com slash shooting show so in, in the event of any sort of mishap like our satellite got uh, it went into self-destruct here uh, some time ago uh, any
anything like that. If we're not on, you can immediately go to our web page there on the internet and uh, find out what the heck's going on because we will update that immediately. Also, we have some long distance phone rates, some phone cards for sale, uh, some great long distance phone rates. There are some business opportunities here also. If you're interested in our phone deal, again, anything we do like this helps us stay on the air. If you've ever worked in network marketing, you need to call about the dot patch, you need to call about our long distance rates, and that number is 1-800-648-648. 8411. Again, 1-800-648-8411 for our discount long distance package. And if you're interested in a business opportunity, you certainly can take advantage of it. Okay, friends, let's go back in time just a little bit. We have some features from past programs that we're going to be running uh, periodically here, and we have one today I think you're going to enjoy. Let's do that right now. It's not that difficult to fire a revolver accurately when you're shooting at one target. Give me another one. Another target? Yeah. So what we're going to do now, we're going to change it up a little bit. And I'm going to draw in five, six, and, and do a reload. And the way I reload a revolver like this, I have to practice ammunition again. Being right-handed, I'll hit the thumb release with the thumb on my right hand. Break the revolver over to the left hand, straight up and down. You want gravity to help you take the empty, the spent cartridges out of the revolver. Come back around, charge it straight up and down. You want gravity there again to help you. Then when you do that, you come up, put it back in your gun hand. Let's see if we can shoot 12 rounds in about six seconds. We'll shoot that target on the left again. Target on the left, 12 shots. two one hundredths of a second. We're going to go back and review the actual time between the sixth and the seventh shots there. And I'll give you an idea of the time it took. It was 2.12 seconds, which is really not that good. Let me see if I can do that again. Yeah. Let's try it again. Same target. <laughs> Looks like I got a lot of holes in it anyway. All right. Jim doesn't have any faith in my ability. That was 1.73. It's a little bit quicker. That was about four tenths of a second. Any questions on the uh, 625s? We'll shoot this model 27 a little bit. And remember the one feature that I told you about this revolver was an extremely long sight radius and a very light weight barrel. So with that in mind, you should be able to start and stop this gun from target to target r relatively quick. So I'm going to try to get my finger warmed up to this particular gun. And I'm just going to draw and shoot six rounds on the target on the left for a total time. And we'll try something a little different on the second string. Let me see if what I can do here. Well, I tell you what, them balloons are in my way. You're shooting the target on the left. We we'll draw and shoot six. Target on the left again. All right. Total time was 197. I had about an average of about a 1500, 1600 split. So what I'm gonna try to do for you now, total time of 197. See if I can draw and shoot two shots on each of the three targets in the same amount of time, maybe a little bit quicker. So I have to move from target to target in about 16 one hundredths of a second. Let's see if I can do that with the sun in my eyes. When you gave you the self that big 
gap there, you ought to be able to do it. You gotta have a cushion. You gotta have a cushion. Uh, now I gotta shoot between the balloons here. I finally did something right. That was 183 for total time. And the shot splits again were 16, 16, 15, and 17. So the same amount of time it takes to fire on one target, you can go ahead and kind of spread them out a little bit and hit several targets. It's a model 617. It's a 22 long rifle. And if you chose a gun to shoot and to practice and learn how to shoot a revolver, this would probably be the best choice available. It's very durable, it's accurate, it's rugged, it's cheap. And 22 ammunition is relatively inexpensive. And to show you how easy it is to shoot, I'm going to see if I can break these six balloons, and I'm going to shoot this thing upside down, double action. Just slow fire, playing around a little bit, because Jim won't do it. <laughs> because you don't know how to shoot upside down. <laughs> well, I was born standing up. Let's see what we can do here. We'll shoot these six balloons upside down, Double action here. Let's see what that look like here. You know it, I don't have to say it. <laughs> Take it out. Anybody can do it when you got ten shots. This particular gun is a, a one of uh, two prototype models, a 10-shot Smith & Wesson 22 revolver. Yeah, we'll let Jim shoot a little bit. He was laughing at me. <laughs> really getting to laugh now. Jerry never did learn how to shoot upside down, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him a little demonstration. He's had trouble with it. He's kind of stiff. Shoot that plate rack in the back with the eight inch hole. Come on, Jim. Shoot him a little further. Make it a little bit harder here. I just shoot slow and I hit. Okay. I stole this out of my wife's purse this morning. We'll see if this will work. Let's I do a little zoom here. Wait a minute, Jim. This ain't the right one. Uh-oh. This ain't the right one. What? I think. What? This is Jim's real mirror. <laughs> <laughs> That's a present from your wife. I realize that. Okay. <laughs> That's a nice mirror, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> That's a special mirror. What's in his other mirror, Jerry? That's his own personal mirror. Can I shoot the mirror on the last shot? <laughs> Jerry. The biggest problem you have here is making sure you shoot far enough away where you don't shoot your sleeve up. Shot standing up straight. <laughs> you had a crutch on your gun. Had a crutch on your gun. You had a crutch. You want to shoot in front? All right. I had a crutch on my gun. Jerry, just do it without the crutch. Ah, what you want? Want a thirty-eight? Yeah. Well, let him shoot a man's gun, a real gun. Right. It's a little bit harder here. You got three things you got to look at. As long as you can think backwards, it's not too bad. Which I've been accused of thinking backwards quite a lot. 
Nice mirror, Jim. Nice mirror. <laughs> thing we're going to do here is shoot the uh, Clark 22 rifles a little bit. Uh, really a fun gun. This one here, uh, I've been having for about five years and shot about 50,000 rounds through it. Won four championships down in Florida shooting this one particular rifle. Uh, even though I got beat this year shooting Jim's gun, it wasn't the gun's fault. <laughs> what we're going to do, we're going to race a little bit. I'm going to shoot on the left side of that paint rack going into the middle and Jim's going to shoot the right side coming into the middle. And we want y'all to, to judge and see who is the better marksman here today. <laughs> this is the brother-in-law grudge deal. <coughs> Go. Oh. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> you shoot on the right, I shoot on the left. Who's hollering go? Give us a holler. Stand by ready to go. Shoot it ready. Hey, 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 get the wait gun down. <laughs> you got to watch. Right. right. Left. Fire. Ah, uh, more bullets! I gave him a hard time. We, uh, coming in today, we noticed that there was a couple of Texas license plates on cars in the parking lot. So we figured uh, we didn't want to disappoint any of the neighbors from Texas, so we thought we'd bring a Texas gun to shoot today. Uh, of course, everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> nice T-shirt, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got a little 45 70 revolver here. And Jim's going to demonstrate that revolver on that, that larger steel plate right there. Let's see what it'll do to it. He's got to hit it first. I think that cold it. <laughs> That's for all you folks in Texas. <laughs> I want one. All of us as shooting enthusiasts should be subscribing to Shotgun News, the trading post for anything that shoots. Three big issues monthly with literally thousands and thousands of firearms bargains. Shotgun News, Post Office Box 669, Hastings, Nebraska, with zip code 68902. Their phone number, area 402-463-4589. MasterCard or Visa for subscriptions only. Now call them at 1-800-345-6923. I can also see some of your gentlemen here have the lady friends with you. And it's really hard to convince the ladies that you need another gun. Most of you gentlemen probably have five or six, which is, which is just minimum. You just barely survive. But to convince the wife that you need another one, you have to prove to her that it's great in the kitchen. And with a gun like this, you can, you can, easily, con you can easily convince her, uh, convince her of that. And the way I like to demonstrate that for you, we've got something here that'll outslice and outdice any Vegematic. <laughs> this is a model uh, 629 uh, Magna Classic DX. It's stainless steel. It's a seven and a half inch barrel. It has fully interchangeable front sights. Uh, comes with a round butt or square butt stock. It's a, it's a bright finish stainless. They made 3,000 of these. Probably some of the finest revolvers ever come out of the factory lately with the uh, Magna Classic series. Very accurate there. And we're gonna try a Federal 180 grain, 44 Magnum load, and see what I do to head a cabbage. But first, I, I forgot something. I, I'm getting sloppy in my demo here. If you got guests coming over, <coughs> I only recommend the authorized Smith & Wesson salad dressing <laughs> <laughs> and the federal 180-grain market. Let's see what I'll do to a head of cabbage. 
I'm gonna get up kind of close and personal, but I'll shoot my rack right there, Jim. Watch All right. Years. Let's see what we can do to a head of cabbage. Oh, years. <coughs> Magnum round is doing about 1,750 feet a second. It's extremely fast for a center fire handgun round. And it really should do wonders to this can. Good. Stay right there, Jim. I need now, my razor. Now remember, this is a very fast bullet. Let's see what it'll do to that can. Better hurry, the wind blows. Shot right through it. <laughs> I'm going to try one a little bit slower. That's about 1,700 feet a second. Let's see what I do with that can. Oh, yeah. Shooting Show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station. Here it is. This is the Big Boar uh, Grizzly from LAR Manufacturing, the good people out there in Utah. And this is a single shot rifle for target or for long range hunting in the great 50 Browning machine gun cartridge. Uh, this gun is capable of a four inch or less five shot group at a thousand yards. Phenomenally accurate, extremely well made, and surprisingly affordable. For information on this great target or hunting gun, give LAR a call. Their number is area 801-280-3505. Again, area 801-280-3505. And get an information pack on this big bull rifle, and for that matter, on the other great line of products from LAR. Friends, I want to show you something here. You know, we've been talking about this great Georgia Arms ammunition for some time on our program now. And I tell you what, the proof is in the shooting, believe me. We were down shooting certainly some of our paper plate targets the other day, and we had our Grizzly 44 Magnum here. And I tell you what, it's a pretty good trick, one, to have a rimmed revolver cartridge function in a semi-automatic uh, anyway, but these folks from LAR really are successful at this. But for any semi-automatic to be extremely accurate one like this grizzly with the close tolerances they have and the very rugged construction but you've got to have excellent ammunition well friends let me tell you what I was shooting off our rest here at 25 yards just uh, not on our, our uh, uh, adjustable rest I was just shooting with my, my hands rested on the top of the bench rest there and five shots with this grizzly at 25 yards with this great Georgia Arms 44 Magnum ammunition. Uh, we'll take a closer look at this in just a second. But I'll tell you what, friends, this is fantastic. 1.3 inches 
just a little better than offhand at 25 yards. In fact, with any semi-automatic, that's pretty darn good, but you've got to have superior ammunition to do it. And I tell you what, this, uh, this Georgia Arms ammunition is, <laughs> I can't hand load better than this. This is absolutely terrific. Now, friends, think about this. The good folks at Georgia Arms are helping us stay on the air. They have the best ammunition at the best prices I've ever heard of. So please give them a call. You get a free call. You get a free catalog. And they're absolutely some of the nicest people I've ever had the opportunity to meet around this industry. So please, if you would, let me give you their number. And I keep this with me at all times. Call them up. The 800 number is Georgia Arms, 1-800-624-6861. Again, 1-800-624-6861. And tell Curtis and those folks down there, we really do appreciate them helping to keep our shooting show on the air. I was talking to them the other day, and they were talking about what uh, different people in the industry were doing. And I said, well, you folks are certainly doing a great turn here by helping to keep our information flowing out to the American public. Because tell you what, friends, if we don't keep this information coming, you don't have to worry. We're not going to have guns left. So please thank the good folks at Georgia Arms for helping to keep us on the air. You can't go wrong. Free call, uh, free catalog. Again, call them 1-800-624-6861. Georgia Arms down in beautiful Villa Rica, Georgia. Friends, we certainly hope you're enjoying our program. We're very pleased to be bringing it to you here today. Recognize my good friend here, Leroy Scott. And, uh, uh, sir, it's been a, it's a lot of interesting things going on right now, huh? Well, I guess, Johnny, if I have time to look at them, I have a fax from the uh, NRA uh, complaining about what the Center for Disease Control is doing. They were specifically prohibited from using funds to advocate or promote gun control and they seem to defy, be defying the intent of the law. They released a study, study highlighting the alleged disparity among industrial nations in child deaths caused by gunfire. Now remember they've been calling anybody under 21 years old a child. Was it 21 or went even further than that? They may have even gone further than that. Uh, they said the uh, rate of death among U.S. children far outpaces the death rates of other nations. Um, not the least, uh, it's, the research is flawed, uh, at least in the respect that the 25 industrial companies examined, some of which aren't industrialized, others aren't even countries. Moreover, they treated these 25 unrelated countries from four continents as if they were a single country for comparison with the U.S. Uh, the big majority of, them, uh, of the population in them was from Japan. Uh, I'm just... Uh, well, this is something we've seen from the Center for Disease Control for some time. They're using, uh, you got some anti-gun people down there. This is just another backdoor method of trying to make us as gun owners look bad. You know, I saw something in the paper a few days ago saying that over twice as many people are killed by doctors misdiagnosing people than with guns. That's correct. Now, wait a minute, friends. <laughs> now, wait, does that mean we're going to outlaw doctors? I mean, what's the deal? You know, that's, that's how ludicrous uh, some of these studies are. By the way, this is something that's really a burr under my saddle blanket. Let me tell you what. A few days ago, I was watching the uh, one of the a, uh, uh, Alphabet Network news programs, and they had Tanya Matoxa of the NRA on there, and I thought Tanya represented the NRA fairly well. Um, they had Senator Lautenberg on uh, uh, <clears throat> about his Lautenberg Amendment, and we were talking about domestic violence, and they were talking about uh, uh, Lautenberg saying, well, no one who's ever had any violence ever before. And I talked about this at the beginning of the show today. Uh, uh, some things are not very serious that sometimes happen. Now, if someone has been convicted of felony domestic violence, felony domestic violence, okay, I can see it then, or uh, as far as, as uh, they've got a lot better case for removing guns. But a misdemeanor, which might be spanking your kids, it might be your wife slapping you. Who the heck knows? You know, Johnny, I'd probably, I'd probably really be in trouble with the child protection people now because when I brought my kids up, 
I didn't spank them many times, but when they needed it, I did. Well, you also, you didn't put them in the hospital. I mean, you spanked them. Certainly but, not. But now there's a national movement to outlaw spanking everywhere. Uh, Dr. Spock was a nut, in my humble opinion. You know, some children, that's all they understand is a little physical pain to the rear end. And friends, it's getting ridiculous. Now, you see the fruits of it. You see these kids running loose on the street with no discipline at all. They've had nothing that have not been spanked, had no discipline, and you've got a bunch of little hoodlums out there, and they're killing each other and doing things. If, Like on this Center for Disease Control, if you factor out the minority children that, from welfare, the minority children that grew up on welfare without parents, then you lose the majority of people being the young people being killed by, by any means. Well, Johnny, I remember when I was a youngster, that was a long time ago, and my mother felt like I had to be switched. She'd send me out, out in the yard and bring her a branch of, of uh, some sort of bush she had in the front yard, but it grew long, thin, <laughs> long, thin ones. My parents had one of those bushes, too. And she just stripped the leaves off of it, and that thing, it didn't look like it was big enough to hold itself up. <laughs> but it could sure sting on your legs. Well, but you weren't permanently injured, nothing like. No, I wasn't permanently injured on it, and I never got a spanking that I can remember uh, that I didn't deserve. Well, that's really true. Incidentally, on this same news program, they had Nicole Brown Simpson's sister on there. And I asked her what she thought about domestic uh, people, domestic violence and having guns in the home. And of course, she wants to take all the guns away, period. I mean, that was my impression from her. Oh, yes. What, to ask me what kind of authority, if, if her sister had had a 38 Special Revolver, she wouldn't be out there in the graveyard today, you know? Well, she might not have been. But very, very possibly because uh, a knife in a gunfight, the gun almost always wins. In a gunfight, a knife is really a second uh, a class weapon. Unless somebody happens to be an expert at throwing it. Well, and, and that's very unlikely. So Very unlikely. What, we've, what we're seeing in the news, they're using emotional cripples trying to make or initiate national policy. And that's what made me so angry. Here we have... Um, Friends, go back in your history books, read about the French Revolution, about the mobs that carried people to the guillotine. It was a bunch of emotional cripples. Mob rule is emotion driven. This is what Billy Boy Clinton wants to have, is mob rule, uh, his mob anyway, based on emotion. And isn't this why we have a representative form of government? We've run out of time on today's program. We want to thank you for being here with us today. Please, uh, hopefully by this time next month, we won't have to ask you for any more contributions, but we still need some help. So if you can, please send what you can to me, Johnny Rowland, 327 Irvin Rowland Road in Doverly, Louisiana. That zip code 71024. Our phone number, 318-377-5189. If you'd like to talk to Bobby about advertising, certainly give him a call at area 903-693-5097. We do want to welcome aboard the good people from NWI with their great 1919 uh, semi-automatic conversion. Uh, you can give uh, NWI a call if you'd like information on this. Uh, great uh, converted machine gun now. It's a semi-automatic rifle, area 503-429-5001. Also, we're planning a fun gun day, <clears throat> fun gun weekend at Clark Custom Guns. On May 17 and 18, that's the weekend after Mother's Day, we want to invite everyone who can to come down and be with us. We're going to have some shooting matches. Hopefully, we're going to give away some prizes from some manufacturers. We certainly hope so. And that's going to be a great time. Put it on your calendar. Clark Custom Guns, <clears throat> our shooting show, Fun Gun Days. Uh, May 17 and 18. So anyway, also, please remember our radio show on the American Freedom Network. GE1, Channel 7, 5.8 Audio. Also, our gospel show on Sunday mornings from 10 to 10.30 Eastern Time on G4, Channel 14. The radio shows, of course, on Sunday from 12 to 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Friends, we're out of time. We'll see you on the next program.